Okay, my name is Adam Doyle. I am a multimedia journalist in broadcast services for Texas Tech Athletics. A lot of it is basically seeking out stories um, within the athletic department from all sports, um, finding things that, uh, finding different stories that we can tell about athletes from a number of different sports, um, shooting those, editing those, kind of telling stories and providing content for the website, um, for social media, for YouTube, uh, a lot of the platforms that people are finding things uh, on nowadays. And, and some of it is as simple as doing what the media would do, um, shooting media availabilities, um, highlights of games, things of that nature. Um, in a lot of aspects, I'm just kind of, depending on what sport it is, uh, I'm just supposed to en engulf myself in those athletes and in that sport and, and give them what they need video-wise. No, I, I didn't have this position before. I did something pretty similar. I was a sports reporter, a weekend uh, sports anchor and reporter for uh, KCBD News Channel 11 here in Lubbock uh, for two years, a little over two years before I moved over to Tech. And I'm doing something very similar here than I did there. The only difference, the main difference being that I'm not, you know, doing the six o'clock and 10 o'clock uh, news, not doing live shots, things of that nature. Before that, um, I, I was an intern at KCBD for a short period of time, and I was an intern for the better part of a year uh, for KFOR, the NBC affiliate in uh, Oklahoma City. So um, basically a lot of local television um, at, a, at a pretty large market and a medium-sized market before I, I made my way over to tech. Multimedia. I mean, multi is clearly in the name, so it's uh, really, it's kind of, the way I would def define it is it's a number of different platforms in which uh, your video content, your photos, your, you know, all of that stuff is, is all the different platforms that that stuff would go on and, and trying to reach it out to the masses. It's crazy. I mean, and it has to do with more probably with the phone and the little devices that we carry around all the time. Uh, that has changed everything. Now, when you went from, uh, you know, the flip phones to the smartphones, now content is distributed and received so differently because even, even growing up, and I, the way I talk about it makes me sound like an old soul, like it was 40 years ago, but even, even 10 to 15 years ago, it felt like getting on television was still a way to kind of make yourself known. Uh, now you, you don't need that anymore. You have clearly YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, you said it, Periscope, Facebook Live, all these different things. You can go live, you can do whatever you want from your phone, um, and, and you can make a name for yourself or you can you know, broadcast something immediately uh, today's age is so immediate, it's made our attention span so short as well because we can get things so quickly. We don't need to wait till 6 or 10 o'clock at night uh, to hear what's going on in the world. So yeah, just in the last 10 years, uh, things have changed drastically. And what we do, especially here, is completely different now too. Uh, we have to realize that our audience isn't wanting to wait around and watch um, you know, four to five minutes worth of something or even two people just talking. Uh, they don't have as much of an interest in it now. They need it. They need it now. They need the you know the content immediately, directly to the point, um, and that changes a lot of what we do. So it's just the it's the age that we live in. I think a lot of it is our features. You know, I'm depending on what television outlet you come from, depending on what school you went to. Uh, features can be can range from an entire documentary, which could go up to 30 to an hour to what we've seen with some of the ESPN documentaries up to <laughs> nine to 10 hours worth of content. But uh, now you, you shrink all of that. You know, I'm, I came from television where a minute and a half to two minute package was exactly what they were looking for. You would front it for 30 seconds and then you, know, you would have a minute and a half to tell that story and then you kick back to the anchor. We are having to shrink those things even shorter than that, which it, it becomes very difficult to tell someone's story in a minute. I mean, you, you have to think about that. Can, can I tell somebody you know, what this person went through growing up or, or what's unique about this person. Can I do it in one minute? Uh, that's what makes things challenging nowadays. Typically, you know, even in DTI and things of that nature, we get to, uh, you know, you, you have a four minute package. It's like, we, we've got to make that, a, you know, a minute and a half, two minutes at the longest uh, because people just aren't going to follow it for that long. That's, that's the main thing that I see. You know, you're not highlights, things of that nature. You don't have to shrink those down because that's a live event. That's a game that people are going to tune in for. They want to know everything that happened in the game. So they're not going to worry about that uh, as much necessarily. But yeah, for, when telling stories, you got to shrink it down a lot. That's probably been the biggest difference. I wouldn't say one specific instance, but I'd say that over time when you have meetings with the marketing department and they maybe to a fault at sometimes take some of the analytics that we see on social media maybe too seriously, but you have to, you have to pay attention to them. 
uh, because you, when you see how many people have watched the video on Twitter or Facebook, and then you see how many people saw it on their timeline, and you see how, how many people watched it all the way through, when you see the discrepancy between those three numbers, and you're like, okay, well, 20,000 people saw it on their phone. Okay, but how many people engaged with it? How many people watched the entire thing? That's what gets scary, because when you actually know those things, like in specific numbers, uh, it makes you, it honestly can make you think a little bit too much about what you're doing, um, instead of just focusing on, on you know, the task at hand and, and telling a story or getting you know, that information out to somebody. But that's, I don't think there was a specific instance in which we realized that um, if anybody ever tells you that they have social media figured out or if they have you know, media itself figured out, you know, you could take a swing at that person because they're clearly, they clearly don't know what they're talking about. Um, it's going to keep changing and nobody's going to have a great grasp on it. And we're all just kind of, uh, we're not throwing stuff against the wall and hoping it sticks, but it, it's close to that. Everybody's kind of in a race to figure it out and nobody quite can. As many people use Facebook, I don't know the exact number, I, I want to know how many people, it's crazy how many people use Facebook. Um, and, and Twitter is still an extremely powerful force and Instagram continues to grow. Snapchat is crazy. Um, it's everything you kind of, you have to live on those things uh, in order to get all of your audience because there are generational and demographic, you know, gaps between all of these, you know, social media outlets. So Facebook, clearly an older demographic. Twitter is kind of in my wheelhouse. It's informational. It's kind of the, I, I feel like it's something very beneficial to me. Instagram seems like the group that's just younger, a few years younger than I am. And then Snapchat is, is, uh, is crazy. I mean, that's, that's the one that's kind of, uh, tough to, to, to grasp um, and, and get completely figured out. But there's so, there's so many of them and they'll continue to grow. Uh, you, you have to stay on top of those things. And that's why I think you see that a lot of our department is young and a lot of athletics communications is young um, because the target audience, a lot of this stuff is younger people and they, they spread it to the older people. I feel like that Facebook, YouTube, those are kind of the older uh, demographics and that's how we we get those things and I know that there I don't know the specifics on it but I know that uh, external operations in general now is, is finding ways to send our content through email and things of that nature to uh, the older demographic uh, to a lot of our donors as well to get them that material because it is very it, it's more difficult to get to them because there's a couple steps in there that seem simple to younger people that are you know technologically savvy some of the older people that weren't, weren't raised on all the technology, yeah, they, they become kind of the harder group to reach. Still a very important group that we have to reach, though, because they, clearly they bring a lot of finances to the university.